Can you tell me, Dr. Vincent, how did this all come about? How did the group get founded? Well, I have to give a lot of credit to uh, Ashling and uh, Brian Dolan. They were uh, looking into uh, doing some development adjacent to their own lands and they uh, found out purely by accident that there was a, an application in for this uh, uh, waste facility. Uh, uh, in Poolboy, adjacent to the old dump. So that's so they uh, started the campaign, got the uh, information uh, regarding the permit. It turned out that it's far bigger than we had initially expected, or anybody knew. Nobody seemed to know about it. The application was uh, done very quietly before Christmas, and. Uh, They've just started to get a group together because there's a short window of opportunity to object to this. We've got until the 24th of January to lodge an objection. The public meeting tonight was told of a range of coincidences from the short window of uh, objections and when the, uh, the, the actual licence was uh, applied for and the fact that it, it miraculously was just at 22,500 which was the level at which an EPA involvement or an EPA uh, feasibility study or impact uh, study was not required. Uh, did any of that strike you as odd uh, as part of the committee? Uh, definitely. There's been a lot of aspects of this that's uh, somewhat uh, underhand and clandestine, as you say. And what we've also found out is that in addition to the original application for the site adjacent to the old uh, uh, pool boy dump, the, uh, the same group or company uh, has acquired uh, over 70 acres of land uh, across immediately across the road adjacent to uh, uh, the pool boy facility. So again the question arises what is the plans for this? It's uh, even closer to the Callows and even a worse location for uh, a waste facility than the current one in Poolboy. You presented some uh, research on medical issues and um, ailments that may occur from uh, people living in proximity to such activity and landfill with the uh, audience tonight. What were those key findings? Well, there's more and more information uh, coming available all the time, and they've found that the, these uh, these facilities are providing more and more toxins and infections, and they're discovering more and more health hazards all the time. Uh, the, the, some of these take a long time to develop, especially those associated with heavy metals, lead, cad cadmium, manganese. They're now being implicated in conditions such as uh, chronic illness uh, and dementia. But they have, over, uh, over the last number of years, strong evidence that it is associated with congenital malformations, uh, low birth weight, growth retardation. It is strong evidence associated with a certain group of cancers, stomach, bladder, prostate, lung, and it's associated with a whole range of infections and uh, also, something that should be kept in mind is all these trucks and lorries, they, uh, they give out debris and uh, disease as they pass through in the streets, and the diesel fumes is also a problem, and the accidents. So it's not just the gas and odours, it's the leachate getting into the water system, which is one of the, one of the major uh, health hazards. I can just point out uh, that cigarettes and tobacco were introduced around 1600, uh, into this country, but it wasn't until 1950s that there was definitive evidence that it caused lung cancer. So sometimes it takes a long time to accumulate the evidence. Now we already have a lot of evidence that it definitely causes many major serious health problems, but I think the more and more evidence will come through and it will be associated or causative of even more conditions as the evidence is uh, gathered. Um, as the chairman of the group, what were you encouraged most by from tonight's um, meeting and participation by members of the public in Ballinus Law? Well, there was a fantastic uh, turnout here tonight. There's a, again, it was an example of the fantastic uh, uh, community spirit that's in Ballinus Law. I've seen this over the years to do with the hospital, to do with the previous uh, dump and pool boy and the way the community came together to get it closed and again tonight. And you could, anyone that was here, you could feel the uh, frustration, the anger that we have to resurrect this fight again. It's a fight that uh, you heard some of the people say there, they never thought they would ever have to hear about fighting a waste facility in Balanced Law again, and here it comes round again. But they, they seem to be ready for it. We had a, a great representation from our uh, county councillors, uh, senators, 
politicians and Minister Nocton was here as well and they're all given their support to this facility. The, this to the protest against this facility too. The, the meeting it seemed quite surprised to hear the former town councillor Carmel Greeley um, read from the High Court injunction that was secured by 21 people in the community uh, against Galway County Council uh, at the time of the installation of the first landfill for Galway County Council. Did that come as a shock to some of the committee members that as plain as it was as she read out that Galway Council had agreed never to include a, la a transfer facility or a landfill or adjacent to the existing pool by site in its jurisdiction? Well, it was fantastic. It was great to hear Carmel Greeley, one of the uh, original uh, group that protested against the uh, dump in Ballinas Law. They took it all the way to the High Court and they got the High Court uh, uh, decision. She read out the decision. Everybody heard it clearly. It was not just that there could never be another uh, waste facility on that site, but also in the adjacent lands. And it made a uh, particular mention that the, it, this included a transfer station. So, I mean, it couldn't be more clear that this has been prohibited uh, by a High Court decision. And what next for the campaign? Well, this campaign, like uh, I said, there, it's just starting. Uh, we have got a short window to lodge our initial objection, which has to be in by, as, as I said, 24th of January. Uh, that will be done. We will meet, we will get some more expert opinion from people who uh, will involve the EPA. We'll also have to take some legal advice on this and we'll also get some barrister to uh, look over that High Court decision and see that. We also expect our representatives and councillors to be as good as their word here tonight and to, because they have the power to get this decision reversed at county council level. So we're expecting them to go ahead and uh, do that.